Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and welcome back to our Java FX for Beginners series. In this episode, we're going to have a look at the application life cycle of a Java FX program. So let's get right to it. So let's create a new project. So we'll go to Eclipse, to the file menu, new, Java project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this from scratch, not using any of the EFX Eclipse plugin that we installed in one of the earlier videos. So just so that we understand what the actual underlying mechanisms are for creating and launching JavaFX applications. And so that you can appreciate what the EFX Eclipse plugin does for us. So let's create the project. We're going to call it Lifecycle. Click the next button and click finish. We don't need to create a module, so let's click the don't create button. And click on the source folder. Right click and we're going to create a new package because it's not good form to create your class files in the default source folder without having a package name. So we're going to call this package application. Hit enter. So we'll right click on the application package, click new, and click class. We're going to call this class main. And I'd also like to include a public static void main method in that class. So click finish. And here we have their general outline of a Java program. For Java FX programs, they're all they're required to subclass or to descend from the application class. So we're going to say that class main that we just created extends the application class. And of course right away we're going to get an error because we haven't imported the Java FX application package. So we'll do that. Just hovering over and then click on import. And then of course we have another error hovering over. In the application class there is an abstract method called start that all application, all Java F applications must have. So we'll click add unimplemented methods and you'll see that uh, the IDE has added the start method for us. So we'll just clean it up and I'll get rid of that to do remark. So unlike Java, in Java FX, the entry point for the program is the start method. And the start method is called by the function launch from the application class. So Eclipse has created the start method for us. Now from the application class, this is the only method that we are required to implement. There are, however, two other methods worth mentioning that are part of the JavaFX application or program lifecycle. So if we were to anywhere in this class, right click, find source, and then pick override or implement methods. You'll see from the application class, we have two other methods. They are init and stop. Now in the application class, these methods don't do anything. They're, they're kind of no op, if you will, methods. What we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to override them, but I'll just click on both of those and click OK. And Eclipse will enter those into our program. So let's just hover over the first the init method. And we'll look at uh, the Java doc for that. And we'll see down here the implementation of this method provided by the application class does nothing. So it's kind of superfluous to have a call to the super dot init since it does nothing so I'm just going to remove that and same with stop in that stop it says the implementation of this method provided by the application class also does nothing so again remove 
the call to the super class method stop. So the way that this works in Java FX, and I'll just arrange these in the correct order. I'm just going to move the start method, or sorry, the stop method down to the end. Now in the main method, we need a method call to uh, launch, passing along the arguments that were provided, if any, on the command line. Launch will call in turn the initialization method or the init method. Once that method is completed, it will call the start method. And once the start method is completed, it will call the stop method. Now, for most of the programs that we're going to write, we're not going to really do anything in the init method or the stop method. All of our code is going to be written in the start. But these are just be aware that these are available and they are part of the life cycle of the Java FX program. So, for example, if there's anything that you need to do, like creating uh, objects before the program starts uh, in the init method or cleaning up resources and whatnot in the stop method, you know that you have these things that are available to you. For the purposes of illustration, I'm just going to put in some sysout commands to the console so you can see when we run this program actually how it goes through them. So sysout and we're going to do the same in the start method. And the same in the stop method. So sysout is just a shortcut and will control space in the Eclipse editor in case you guys didn't know that. And we'll just finish up the final one here. So I'll enter into the start method because we don't have a graphical user interface. I'm going to actually just end the program by typing in the exit from the platform class. And then when we run the launch, we'll begin the cascading calls to the init, the start, and the stop methods. So let's give that a run. And there we are. Init executing, start executing, and once we exit the start method, the stop method is called automatically. So that in a nutshell is the Java FX application lifecycle. Thanks for watching. Uh, in our next video, we're going to have a look at creating our first Java FX program from scratch. Hope to see you then.